Join friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching CFTV English. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Thank you. Friends, uh, during partition, when Pakistan was carved out of India, uh, one of the significant states that were carved out was Punjab. And uh, there was a person living in undivided Punjab at that point in time called Hafiz Kamaluddin. Hafiz Kamaluddin uh, left from Hisar in Haryana. At that time, it was Punjab. Haryana came much later. Uh, he left from India along with his family and settled down in a place called Sargodha in Pakistan, which is in Pakistani Punjab. He went with his family. At that point in time, they settled down. He had a son. And this son followed in the footsteps of his father, Hafiz Kamaluddin. And when he followed in the footsteps of Hafiz Kamaluddin, he did various things. He set up an organization to help the Mujahideen who were fighting in the Afghan Jihad. You know, people with no limbs or people uh, who, who were killed, but their families needed support. So he started this sort of NGO in Pakistan. Later on, this cleric, because he was following in his father's footsteps, this cleric, he was spotted by the ISI and the ISI arranged for a small lunch. And the host for that lunch was none other than the president of Pakistan, General Zia ul -Haq. General Zia saw a spark in this young man. This young man was fascinated by jihad, fascinated by talk of fighting and killing infidels or killing kafirs. And this is exactly the kind of person that Ziaul Haq wanted. So Ziaul Haq uh, gave him a place at the high table at the Council of Islamic Ideology. The Council of Islamic Ideology was a council set up by Ziaul Haq that gave religious direction to the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and, and, and uh, this, this person, he started mingling with the cream of Pakistan, the most powerful people in Pakistan, the generals, the bureaucrats, the politicians, and of course, the Maulanas who controlled Pakistan. The organization, the so-called NGO, was called Falai Insaniyat Foundation, also Jamaat ul -Dawa. The person I'm talking about is none other than Hafiz Muhammad Said, whom you know as Hafiz Said. Born on 5th of July 1950 in Sargodha in Pakistan, he became the superstar of Islamic terrorism. He was responsible for the 2611 attacks. He was responsible in part for the parliament attacks. And there were so many other attacks, hundreds of attacks that he sponsored. He almost became like a regiment of the Pakistan army because the Pakistani army had forgotten how to fight. After Kargil, which was a, which was a misadventure on part of the Pakistani army. It was a misadventure on part of General Parvez Musharraf. The Pakistani army fought no wars. It did not have the morale to fight. And generals were busy making money, getting themselves corner plots in DHA with defense housing associations which are the sort of creme de la creme of residential plots in Pakistan. But India was the enemy. India was Kafir. India was Hindu. And the Hindus had to be killed. And who better than Hafiz Said? So Hafiz Said was launched into operations in Kashmir. Now, what does this name mean? His name is Muhammad Said. Hafiz means a person who has learnt the Quran by heart. His father was also Hafiz ul Quran. Hafiz Kamaluddin, the son, Hafiz Sayyid or Hafiz Muhammad Sayyid, has also learned the Quran by heart and then he got this, uh, you know, this designation of Hafiz. So Hafiz means a person who has learned the Quran by heart. Yesterday, we came to know that Hafiz Sayyid has been 
you know, sentenced to 34 years in prison. Earlier they were saying 31 years. Now Pakistani media is saying it's actually 34 years. 34 years in prison by the anti-terrorism court in Pakistan. Now I don't know whether Hafiz Saeed has the right to appeal or not. I'm not aware of that. You know, Pakistani laws are funny. Uh, there is no standardization and anybody can do anything. It all depends on one phone call from GHQ Rawalpindi, that is the Pakistan Army Headquarters. I mean, the chief is God in Pakistan for all practical purposes. So I don't know what exactly is happening. But I'll tel you the possible three reasons why Hafiz Saeed has been sent to jail for the rest of his natural life. He is 71 years right now, as we speak. He's 71 years old. So by the time he comes out, he will be 105. We don't expect Hafiz Saeed to survive that long, which means that the Pakistani government or the Pakistani state, the Pakistani deep state, you can call it the establishment, which is another name for the Pakistan army, has decided that we want Hafiz Saeed out of sight, out of mind. Now, three reasons why this has happened. Number one, and the first reason is FATF. You know, the Financial Action Task Force is really turning the screws on Pakistan. And Pakistan is in a state of disarray. Pakistan has been in the grey list for a very long time now. Very long time they've been in the grey list. And every time the FATF comes up for a review, everybody in Pakistan is sort of uh, waiting with bated breath. There are a small section of people who say, no, we are going to be blacklisted. And 95% of Pakistanis believe that, no, we'll be out of the grey list. And, you know, FATF will have nothing to say to us because we have complied with everything. The point is that India has put tremendous international pressure. This is war by other means, what India is doing. And I think this is something that uh, the Modi government has picked up brilliantly. Think about it. Think about what the Modi government has done. It has turned the screws on an entire nation of 22 crore people. 200 million people. 200 million people jumping like popcorn. That is what the Modi government has done. And they realize that for a country like Pakistan, FATF, IMF, these are far, far bigger tools than a surgical strike. Surgical strike sends a message. Balakot airstrike sends a very clear message. You carry out terrorism on India's soil and there will be a price to pay. And no doubt, these were great things, fantastic things that the Modi government did. But at the same time, what they have done is they have isolated Pakistan diplomatically and I'll come back to FATF and Hafiz Saeed in just a moment. Today, IMF has enough data to suspend the program that they had with Pakistan. And not just because there is no uh, discernible government in Pakistan. You know, today is the day when, uh, when Imran Khan will either win or lose uh, the show of strength in parliament, the no confidence portion. It is today, Saturday, that it's going to be done. But the fact of the matter is, Imran Khan or no Imran Khan, it does not matter. Maybe Shabazz Sharif will become the Prime Minister. Who knows? Anybody can become the Prime Minister. Maybe Imran Khan will continue. That is also a possibility. But the fact of the matter is that India has now been feeling for a long time, ever since Narendra Modi ji came to power. Initially, uh, there was a lot of reach out to Pakistan. You know, he went for uh, Nawaz Sharif's family wedding. I'm talking about Prime Minister Modi. He went there. In fact, uh, in a departure from norm, the Pakistani ISI was called at Pathan Court to show them as a mark of good faith that, listen, yeah, this is what your people have done. Prime Minister Modi did everything, everything in his power. Uh, he called Nawaz Sharif for his uh, swearing-in ceremony, the inauguration of the Prime Minister of India. Uh, that is 2014. He did everything that he could to normalize relations with Pakistan. He went out of his way. He put his tremendous political equity on the line. But Pakistan did not understand. They responded 
with Pulwama. They responded with Udi. They responded with so many attacks. And then Modi ji realized that, as we say in Hindi, you know, ke bhoot hai, ye se nahi And that is the time when India started this very, very, very aggressive diplomacy against Pakistan. When Sushma Swaraj ji was the external affairs minister. And then uh, Dr. S. Jashankar, who is now the external affairs minister, has carried forward that legacy brilliantly, defending India's interests, protecting India's interests, and punishing Pakistan for what Pakistan has done. This is also surgical strike, but by other means. This is also a bala court, but by other means. So coming back to point number one, FATF, what happened was that India decided that we must put more and more pressure, give proof to FATF. You cannot influence FATF, right? But what you can do is give enough facts to, uh, to the FATF people so that they keep Pakistan on the grey list. And this is what India has been doing. And proof is very easy to find in Pakistan. Proof of jihad, proof of money laundering is very easy to find. I mean, look at Imran Khan. Look at the recent comments that Imran Khan, just look at the small little video. To 63A, yani ke jo khule aam horse trading ho rahi hai. Politicians ke zameer khareede ja rahe hai. Beard bakriyo ki tarah unko band kiya ja rahe hai. Uh, hotels mein aur uh, unki kiemte lagai ja rahi hai. Social media ka zamana hai. Bache bache ko pata hai kis kiemat ke upar apne zameer bech rahe hai. Koon si jumhuriyat hai ye? Koon si dunia ki jumhuriyat mein is cheez ki ijazat di jati hai? और जो सबसे बड़ा इंसाफ का फोरम है अदलिया उससे हम एक्सपेक्ट करते थे कि कम से कम इसके ऊपर और कुछ नहीं तो सो मोटर एक्शन ले क्योंकि ये तो एक मजाक बन गया है पाकिस्तान की डेमोक्रेसी का क्योंकि ये तो कहीं इतने खुले आम तो मेरे घर में बनाना रिपब्लिक्स में भी नहीं सियासतदान नहीं बिकते जो ये बिक रहे थे और बिक रहे हैं और वो देखें अभी जो पंजाब में हो रहा है कभी वो अवारी के अंदर लोग बंद हैं जनाब उनको निकल रहा है गार्ड्स no, Imran Khan is saying that uh, his own, you know, uh, members of national assemblies or member of parliament of Pakistan, they've been bought. That millions of rupees have been given. Other parties have bought his MNAs or people who supported him. This is the Prime Minister of Pakistan openly saying it. Do you think that India would not have made a clip out of this and sent it to the FATF? Duly translated from Urdu to English? Of course they would have. Because Pakistan is also accused of money laundering. Where is the money coming from? If you pay 25, 30, 35, 40 or 50 crore rupees to a member of parliament in Pakistan, you're not going to pay him by check after duly deducting TDS. It's got to be in suitcases full of cash. Obviously this is coming from money laundering. Proof such as this is widely available because the Political elite in Pakistan just cannot keep quiet. They, they simply cannot shut up. They will keep on talking every single day. Imran Khan loves the camera. Imran Khan loves seeing himself. He should have, Imran Khan should have been a television anchor. You know, uh, he should have been a TV anchor. He, he belongs on the TV screen. He does not belong in, in Pakistan's National Assembly. This man wants to address the media every day and listen, friends. If you talk to the media every single day, every single day, whether it's uh, Pakistani media or international media, you're bound to commit a mistake. You're bound to commit a mistake and people will pick up on that mistake and, you know, hold you accountable. This is what 21st century media and social media is all about. Here is the Prime Minister of Pakistan saying that, yes, there is money laundering happening in Pakistan. Now, he did not use the word money laundering, but the fact of the matter is, this is money laundering. You know? And other things like funding terrorism. This has been happening in Pakistan. You go to any big masjid, any big masjid outside Pakistan, there will be people with those chadars saying that aap jihadiyon ke saath taawun kariye. Somebody is giving 10 rupees, 20 rupees, 50 rupees, 100 rupees. Jiski jitni haisiyat utna paisa de diya. And this is what is happening in Pakistan. People are collecting money for jihad. People are collecting money for Taliban. People are collecting money for the Islamic State, for Al-Qaeda. 
but also for the lashkar e taiba and the jaish e mohammed and the hezbollah mujahideen common pakistanis i'm talking about friends i'm talking about common pakistanis somebody has a shop you know somebody had a somebody has a fruit juice stand somebody is working for a company normal everyday middle class lower middle class people these are the people who are sponsoring jihad and there is enough and more evidence of this happening in pakistan now fatf has put tremendous pressure on pakistan and pakistan wants to tell fatf and the world that listen yeah we are cracking down on terrorism what new proof has pakistan found against hafiz said do you know there are two fir's registered against people for 2611 pakistan has registered two fir's against pakistani citizens inside pakistan and these attacks happened in 2008 i'm talking about 2611 in mumbai does it take so long to find proof now i'll tell you why why they have suddenly found proof so the first point was fatf the second point ladies and gentlemen is the fact that pakistan wants to be friendly towards india take a look at the short video ladies and gentlemen pakistan continues to believe in using dialogue and diplomacy to resolve all outstanding issues including the kashmir dispute and is ready to move forward on this front if india also agrees to do so with one third of the world engulfed in some sort of a conflict or war it is important that we keep the flames of fire away from our region in this regard besides kashmir dispute the indo china border dispute is also a matter of great concern for us and we want it to be settled quickly through dialogue and diplomacy the gentleman in this video is general kamar javed bajwa chief of army staff of the pakistan army and he has been telling imran khan for the past 2 2 and a half years you need normalization of relations with india otherwise pakistan will say pakistan cannot survive without india pakistan cannot survive there there i mean top to bottom top to bottom you cannot survive without india pakistan cannot survive without india this is not an emotional point that i'm making this is a very very practical point and let me tell you why i'm saying this number 1 look at the state of their fruits and vegetables in pakistan pulses grains pakistan is largely an agrarian society 70 to 80% of pakistanis are engaged in agriculture and yet pakistan imports food grains because they have mismanaged water they have mismanaged agriculture and they live in their own space you know they have their own mindset their own bubble and they refuse to you know they are the chosen people of god and obviously they don't need to listen to anybody else least of all kafir is like us so the fact of the matter is pakistan is bleeding economically that is point number 2 and it's very important for pakistan that if it wants to survive in the long run it has to have excellent relations with india it's not just about food grains my friends it's not just about pulses dal rice vegetables no it's beyond that it is the overall trade with india because lahore is a stone's throw from amritsar i mean there 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 is one straight road you have you have khasa to the left hand side there's a lot of bsf and army there and you just drive on that road straight and after 20 minutes you'll hit atari atari is on the indian side the village on this india side is called atari and the village across the international border is called vaga you must have heard of vaga border that that's what it is basically it's absolutely no distance yet indian goods are available in pakistan even today but at 4 5 6 times the price because they come from dubai they come from qatar this is point number 2 also the fact that they realize further to point number 2 the pakistanis realize that unless they normalize relation whether india wants to normalize relations with pakistan or not i'm not commenting on that i'm just saying what pakistan wants they know that india will keep turning the screw slowly and slowly what we call the darja hararat the temperature india will slowly and slowly one degree by one degree keep on turning the temperature up in pakistan by various things 
the economy, the military, diplomatically. Look at, look at their PSL. The PSL is failing because the whole structure is financially unviable. Look at the film industry. One film, one film of India, which makes money, makes more money than the entire Pakistani film industry put together in one year. Jitna Bharat ki ek film ek hafte mein kama leti hai, utne Pakistan ki sari film hai, sari languages mein ek saal mein nahi kama pati. I'm talking about hit movies, whether from South or from North. They were making a lot of money. All these Pakistani singers, all that has stopped. Everything has stopped. And it all started with Imran Khan thinking that he could live without India. You know what Imran Khan is going through right now. You're aware. By the time this video is released, you would have a general line of direction as to where Pakistan is going with respect to the no confidence motion. You would know. You would know. And this is giving Imran Khan a major, major headache. And if he wants to take a medicine for that headache, do you know where that medicine is coming from? India. They don't make their own medicines also. And they suddenly decided to cut off all ties. It does not matter to India. India's exports are booming. India's exports are going through the roof. Our non-IT exports, non-IT exports crossed 400 billion recently. India's exports are going through the We don't need Pakistan for trade. We don't need Pakistan for trade. And we have proved that time and again. We don't need Pakistan is, has got a population lesser than Uttar Pradesh. We don't need Pakistan. But Pakistan needs India to survive. And that Pakistanis have realized it. Whether India agrees or not is not something that, that I'm willing to comment upon. I, I don't think India should engage with Pakistan at all. That is my, that is my held belief that India should not, uh, should not engage with Pakistan. However, it is for the government of India to take the final decision. It's not up to me. But if it were up to me, I would say that don't engage with Pakistan. Keep on punishing Pakistan till they come to their senses. And once they come to their senses, then punish them some more. So this is point number two. Point number three is extremely important. Hafiz Saeed is 71 years of age. His son Tala Saeed is the number two in lashkar e -Tayyabha. And the fact is that the Pakistani army and the ISI feel that Hafiz Saeed has become a liability. Friends, this happens everywhere when states try to control terrorism. The terrorist one day becomes a liability for the state. It's not that uh, the Pakistan army is going to call Hafiz Saeed to the officer's mess at GHQ Rawalpindi, the army mess. Put him on a chair, put them on the shoulders and say, you know, he's a jolly good fellow and so say all of us. That's not going to happen. This is an illicit relationship. This is an illegal, illicit relationship. And the Pakistani army wants no part of it. They sued for peace along the line of control because they realized that Afghanistan was going to blow up and they needed their troops on the Western Front and not on the Eastern Front. That way the Pakistani army is very smart and I must commend General Bajwa for his forward thinking. I think General Bajwa took the Pakistani army in the right direction. But the fact of the matter is, Hafiz Saeed is today an embarrassment for the Pakistan army. Hafiz Saeed is one of the main reasons why Pakistan and an entire country remains in FATF. He's one of the main reasons. There are other reasons also. But one of the main reasons is Hafiz Saeed. And the lashkar e -Tayyabha. You know, you can keep on saying that. Falai Insaniyat Foundation, Jamaatul Dawa, they are NGOs. Nobody is fooled by all this. Except Pakistanis, of course. Nobody else is fooled. People know that he's the chief of the lashkar e -Tayyabha. Also, you see, liability, when I say that he's become a liability for the Pakistan army, it also means that tomorrow, if he feels betrayed, I'm talking about Hafiz Saeed, if Hafiz Saeed feels betrayed, he can sort of, you know, call for a press conference. He can go on social media. Why do you even need a press conference? He can just make a video. 
and put it on some random Twitter account or put it on a website or send it to all the embassies in, in, in Pakistan. Courier uh, a, a CD or a pen drive to all the embassies in Pakistan saying that Pakistani Fauj ne mera fayda uthaya, Pakistani Fauj ne musse uh, jihad karwaya, Kashmir mein, Atma Ghati hamle karwaya, they, they made me do suicide bombings in, in uh, Kashmir, they made me carry out, uh, I, I was party to the parliament attacks along with Jamatul Dawa, I was party to 26-11 throughout, he will say all that and the Pakistani army does not want, you know, to get exposed in front of the whole world because of one asset who's gone rogue, if you understand that sort of language. He is an asset for the Pakistani army and today the Pakistani army fears that he may go rogue. Hafiz Said may go rogue and if he does, Pakistani army which is already discredited in front of the world will sink to levels it never ever imagined. So ladies and gentlemen to uh, capture all the points for you once again before I finish this video is Hafiz Said is in jail for three reasons. Number one, FATF. Pakistan wants to get out of FATF. Number two, you know, Pakistan wants better relations with India because their, their economy, their economy is in its last stages. And without India, they cannot hope to rise. Whether India agrees or not is another point. And number three, most importantly, they feel that this asset called Hafiz Said will become an embarrassment for the Pakistan army keep him in jail for the rest of his natural life so that when his prison term is over or he dies whichever is earlier only his dead body comes out of jail not the living half a but with pakistan you can never say for sure maybe 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 pakistani law allows for half a to have an appeal supreme court maybe some general makes a few phone calls to the judge maybe they say that no 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 half a is a sweetheart of a guy and he's actually running an NGO in Pakistan. You never know with Pakistan. But as things stands right now, he goes to jail for 34 years. And I've told you why he will go to jail. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for watching this video. And I would again appeal to you. Like, subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon. We'll keep on getting you good information and great videos. Jai Hind.